Alright folks, today we have to talk about a couple of things regarding Nintendo Switch 2. Well, one of them actually might not have to do with Switch 2, but it could. What are we talking about? Well, this deals with the GameCube coming to Nintendo Switch Online as some new evidence has appeared through some shipping documentation that we very well could be getting the Nintendo GameCube. Oh boy, the Nintendo GameCube on the Nintendo Switch and or NSO on Switch 2, something like that. I know it's a little dark in here. And we're going to cut away from me right now because let's just be honest. Uh, one, uh, the lights aren't on in my studio because two, I'm a little bit under the weather. But we're going to go over here to the gaming leaks and subreddit uh, over here where it says GameCube possibly coming to Nintendo Switch Online. And it says a user on Family Boards, known as Luigi Blood, posted some customs shipping data. In this was discovered to be possible references to a GameCube controller with similar code names and parts to previous NSO controllers. And if you guys remember what those are, we have the Nintendo Entertainment System one, the Super Nintendo one, the Sega Genesis one, and yes, the N64. So... It, another user named LIC Lick backed this up, but both users still had reservations about what this means. Even though this is coming from public shipping data, kudos to those willing to take the time to do it, I still put the flare as rumor since nothing is confirmed till an official announcement of a more specific leak of what this means. You have to be registered to see it, and that's why we can't see it because these are in hidden posts. So we're taking the word obviously over here on the gaming leaks and rumors subreddit. Now, what I find really fascinating about this is the idea that, you know, these controllers could be coming for various reasons. Now, if we think about, you know, the controllers existing in the shippings, uh, the shipping customs data, that doesn't necessarily mean they're ever going to come out. These could just be prototypes and they never become a full product. Uh, if they are a full product, it doesn't necessarily mean GameCube's coming to NSO. It could simply be that Nintendo recognizes that they have had a lot of GameCube remakes and remakes masters uh, not just coming down the line but previously already released on switch so it might make sense to make a wireless version of the gamecube controller uh, for people on switch it's also entirely possible that this is for nso but it's for nso on nintendo switch 2 these don't appear to be in mass production right now these seem to be very small runs which are usually prototype runs so who knows it also could end up on nso later this year we could have a massive new platform addition to nso on switch so this may or may not have to do with Switch 2, but I still wanted to talk about it because in the end, uh, I think it's quite fascinating. And GameCube's, you know, one of those platforms that we wanted to see at some point on Nintendo Switch 2, but we didn't necessarily uh, get what we want. In fact, you know what they say, you can't always have what you want. Well, what we do have, though, is an update from Furukawa. Now, Furukawa uh, is the president of Nintendo, and he talks about future game development for Nintendo Switch 2 in the latest 84th general meeting of investors. And I really like his response here because while he admits that, you know, game development costs are going up, uh, that Nintendo seems to be pretty well positioned, and I tend to agree. So this comes from question 11, and it says, Super Mario Bros. Wonder released last year. It was the first new 2D Mario game in 11 years. It seems that software development for Nintendo Switch is taking longer than in the past. I will note, I don't think... Mario Wonder was in development for 11 years, but I get the gist of the question. In terms of gaming experience, I think it's important for players to have series of memorable experiences at a young age. So it would be nice to see a shorter development cycle and games released regularly, even if they are not major game titles, so young people have more opportunities to play games. Like Nintendo could have brought up a lot of examples of how they do this. I mean, we had uh, two Xenoblade games during the lifetime of Switch, uh, multiple Mario parties, right? We're about to get a third Mario Party game. So Nintendo could have went with the route that, hey, we already do this, but that's not how they chose to answer this. So Furukawa came out and said, game development today is more prolonged, more complex, and more advanced. That is unavoidable. To deal with this, we are continually expanding our development resources and making the necessary investments. And Takahashi responds and says, as hardware advances, it is inevitable that software development takes longer. But I believe we are succeeding in our efforts to shorten development cycles. For example, by steadily improving the development environment following the release of the hardware. 
whether titles take a long time or a short time to develop, we want to make games that are fun. It's not as if Super Mario Bros. Wonder was under continuous development for nearly a decade. There was a long gap between releases of the previous title, New Super Mario Bros. U, and the current title because of various initiatives and studies were made in the meantime. Going forward, we aim to continue with a variety of new offerings, and we hope you look forward to them. Tezuka, executive officer, responds and says, After we finished Super Mario Bros. Wonder, I was reminded 11 years had gone by since the previous game. However, that doesn't mean we did nothing during that time. We developed several new Mario games, such as the Super Mario Maker series, two of them in fact, and the 3D Mario series. To reiterate, Nintendo's creativity and philosophy First, we think about creating entertainment that has never been done before, regardless of whether it's a Mario series game or not. Then we think about how we can make it fun for everyone so they fall in love with Nintendo. All of our games involving Mario, not just Super Mario Bros. Wonder, are created with the goal of encouraging as many people as possible to enjoy them. As for upcoming new titles, some will take some time to develop and others will be made in a short period of time. I hope we look forward to our new offerings. And what this seems to be doing is Nintendo openly admitting that, yeah, game development's getting more complex. It's getting longer. It's taking a bigger period of time to make video games. And we are investing in that. In fact, Nintendo has hired over 400 developers over the last year to add to their companies. So they're not out there laying people off. They're actually making their teams bigger. Nintendo is in the process of opening up a brand new building specifically for video game development here over the next year. So Nintendo is actually expanding their teams and trying to deal with this in a smart way. There was even previously a misreport that Nintendo was against the use of AI and but that's not what was actually said. Nintendo's not against the use of AI. They believe in very specific use cases for it. And let's go over to the now translated by Nintendo question here, question four. It says, efforts are underway to equip smartphones with AI. And it's expected that AI will become more prominent in everyday life. I'd like to hear about Nintendo's initiatives using AI for Akawa responds. In the game industry, AI-like technologies have long been used. For example, to control the movements of opponent characters. So I believe that game development and AI technology have always had a close relationship. Generative AI, which is becoming a big topic recently, can be used in creative ways, but we recognize that it also may raise issues with intellectual property rights. We have decades of know-how in creating the best gaming experiences for our players. While we are open to utilizing technological developments, we will work to continue delivering value that is unique to Nintendo and cannot be created by technology alone. So the reason I wanted to bring this quote up as well is because it had been reported that Nintendo was like, hey, we're going to make games that can't be done by generative AI. That's not really what they're saying. What Nintendo is saying is we will use AI. We'll even use generative AI. But what we are creating from a gameplay perspective, from an art perspective, from whatever we're doing at Nintendo, it can't solely be done by generative AI. So their idea is while we can use it as a tool in game development, it can't be like the entire background of what we're doing because if that's the case, then we lose some of that unique flavor that makes Nintendo Nintendo. So... It sounds like, you know, just like in every area of the programming and software development world, yeah, you're going to use AI. AI is a very useful tool. Heck, I use it in Photoshop sometimes. Heck, I use it to automatically remove backgrounds on images. It is a very useful thing. AI has a lot of good uses that make very mundane, tedious things easier to do and less mundane and less tedious. But at the same time, when you're talking about from a creative perspective, Nintendo's just kind of like, hey, we'll use this, but we're going to use it in our own way and combine with our own creativity. And that's really all we want to hear. I think it's the best case scenario. I know there was a lot of applauding, yay, Nintendo, you're making a stand against generative AI. And they're like, well, no. We just need, realize it needs to be used in a very specific way. And there are some places, not to name anyone specifically, that have no issue using it in every single way, regardless of what the outcome is, uh, including some game developers and producers and directors out there that swear by generative AI and 
talking about how they want to make making games as easy as possible and don't care about the creative process. That's not what Nintendo is saying. They think AI has a place. It's just alongside original creative art and ideas. So, yeah, I, I think Nintendo, I, I think the biggest thing with Nintendo is as we go into the next generation and we see the new games that Nintendo brings forth, that we won't be able to tell if there was generative AI involved or not, because I don't believe any one major asset in the game will be fully done in generative AI. It will be a combination of factors that ends up making it really unique, and we can't tell the difference anyways. And I think that's the way for Nintendo to go. It also helps keep some game budgets a bit more under control, something Nintendo has expressed that can make making games you know, a little bit quicker, even though Nintendo admits, yeah, the budgets are going to go up. Yeah, some games are going to take longer to make than others, but we think we have a good flow and we know what the hell we're doing and we can use tools like generative AI and others to help speed the process up without completely replacing the creative direction we want to go in. Again, to me, this all sounds really, really good. This sounds like Nintendo's taking a positive direction with Switch 2, but I understand a lot of people's trepidations, especially with the AI aspect. A lot of people have been turned off with the way AI has been used. Obviously, we know AI has existed in video games forever. All NPCs and all that stuff in games basically run on some rudimentary form of AI. But yeah, we, uh, we're, we're entering a realm now where we're worried about creative jobs being replaced. And what sucks about that is, well, yes, a generative AI can create a new creation. It's always based on other people's creations. Uh, it's never based on anything that they originally created. And then there's this whole idea out there that the half the internet's just AI against AI, where AI is learning off of other AI, and you're getting really highly inaccurate things everywhere. It's a wild, wild west out there, uh, and I'm excited for some use cases for AI, as long as it seems to be under control. Nintendo, I think they have it under control, but I guess time will tell if they go a little bit too far. Uh, I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel Rubblejance from Nintendo Prime. And I'll catch you in the next video.